What do you say, everybody? Uh, welcome to the Bama Tailgate YouTube channel. Obviously, uh, we are as uh, shocked as everyone that it appears that uh, football coach Nick Saban is retiring, the greatest football coach of all time uh, ever at Alabama. So as this progresses, uh, we're going to jump on here and talk about it, give you our instant reaction. Thanks for hanging out. Make sure that you guys, uh, I would say, like and subscribe and everything. But uh, obviously, we're all just kind of shocked right now. Let's get this thing started, and then we're going to talk about this, take some calls, and uh, just sit here and – Wonder what's next for Alabama and how great it was having Nick Saban as head coach. What do you say, guys, uh, with Brett Elmore? Big Elmo, I'm Mick Gillespie. Obviously, we are here, and uh, just like everyone else, kind of in shock. Uh, we knew that it was a possibility that Nick Saban could retire. Uh, this is not what we wanted. We covered it. We talked about it. He went out and recruited. He had another great season. He did everything that you would expect. Uh, Alabama came up just short in overtime against Michigan. But he's 72 years old, and apparently, from what is being reported, he is retiring as head football coach of Alabama. He's been there since 2007, and his time in Tuscaloosa has been incredible. And um, I'm just – I guess I'm in as much shock as everyone is right now, Brett. Um the greatest of all time. I mean, like it, this is like Bear Bryant retiring all over again. I mean, this is you, you just can't replace this guy and what he means to the community and what he's meant to the football program and everything else. It's uh, I just can't believe it. Your your thoughts. Stunned, uh, really. Um, <clears throat> stunned. And uh, I was coming home from uh, picking my set up from school and you called me and and uh, told me because I, I had no idea. Um, yeah, stunned. I mean, this guy, the greatest of all time, his final tallies, 297 wins, four Heisman Trophy winners, nine SEC championships, eight playoff appearances in 10 years since its inception, and, of course, seven national championships, six of those at the University of Alabama. But this is the way he was going to go. I mean, no fanfare, no nothing. It's, I'm done. He's had that conversation with his family, like you had mentioned, uh, you know, and it, it's it's over. And, and um, like you said, we'll be taking phone calls here shortly, but all of this is so fluid, Mick. Um, <clears throat> Brett McMurphy uh, reporting that uh, Oregon's head coach is going to be is expected to be the top target to replace Coach Saban, Dan Lanning. Yeah. I mean, so you're going to have so much coming out over the next um, few hours and, and days. Um, this is um, – I'm almost just speechless. I, yeah. Wow. I mean, here's, a, here's a tweet from Chris Lowe. One of the greatest runs in college football history is over. Nick Saban informed his team today that he's retiring. Sources tell ESPN six national championships at Alabama, one at LSU. 292-71-1 and one in his 28 seasons as a head football coach, seven national championships. He was the first coach ever to win a championship um, in two different schools in college football. Um, I, I just – I still just can't, like, grasp this – and I know that I, I'm. I, I want to hear from you guys as well. But uh, yeah, uh, comment section. You guys crank it up. Uh, but buddy, you're right. I mean, this is damn sad news. I mean, this is just awful. It is, and um, I don't know. So, <laughs> I mean, I hate to sound this way, but it's almost like um, you know, as an Alabama fan, it's almost like you. You've lost a, 
a member of your family or something. It's uh, so many, uh, you know, flooding back so many great memories um, of watching his teams play. And, right. Um, that's sort of what I, I put on my social videos. You know, thanks for the memories. I mean, we and we knew, Mick, it was, it was going to come to an end one day. We all yeah. knew that. But when it does hit, it, it, it hits hard because you really don't, don't expect it. And I certainly didn't expect it. I thought he was going to come back. I didn't think he – the way he recruited and the way um, the season ended, I thought he would come back. But obviously, you know, some things, some decisions were made, and, and it's done and and over with. Yeah, but, but I tell you what, Mick. Whoever comes in, the, 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 you know, the cupboard's not bare. No, 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 no. I mean, I just no. That's not yeah. that's not it at all. Um. Uh, I it's it's honestly it's just so so shocking. I mean, it's it's we knew that it was a possibility. We talked about it being a possibility. Um. It, but it's just still is just kind of like sinking into the fact that he's not going to be there anymore um, is, I, I mean, I know we're going to get to the replacement and it could be Dan Lanning. And we heard that it could be Dan Lanning. Who's been the Oregon coach did a good job there, but I I'm just not, I'm kind of with Brock right now. Thank you, coach Saban. And I'm speechless. I mean, like Brett, I'm just sitting here thinking uh, out loud, uh, you know, and wondering, you know, um, how well, about well, the well, fact that he went and you know what I knew today yesterday and today I knew they were going to be the days to really worry about because he wasn't going to retire before the national championship game right no. and then you think about it like um, you know is this something that you really want to do but he mm -hmm. got the he he you know he's 72 years old and I mean it father, you just can't beat father time, but I thought he had more juice left in the tank. Obviously. I think he did. Uh, I did too, as far as coaching is concerned, but you know, maybe he wants to try other things. Um, he's, and while he still has that energy and he's, he hasn't worked himself, you know, like, uh, coach Bryant did, or even, um, you know, Joe Paterno and, and some of these others that, when they, when they finished coaching, I mean, I mean that was it for them, literally. Um, you know, he 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 probably wants to try some other things and um, spend some time with family, and and he's been doing this a long time, and yeah. he just and he deserves it if anyone does. Right. Yeah, no doubt. But it's sort of like. Um, like you say, we're both kind of speechless because we're we're just like uh, uh, we're a fan too. And when news like this happens, we're both looking, you know, at at, at all the reaction and and uh, it's something else. Well, Jersey Dolphins brings up a great point. Um, the NIL did it. I I think that the NIL. I think that dealing with recruits, you know, middlemen and the demands that these guys are making now where it's not just about the football, but it's about the money and, and the stuff that goes along with it. Um, yeah, obviously, look, it, it's it, – it, I, I get it. You don't want it to be official. But let me tell you something. We have Chris Lowe on a lot. I've known Chris Lowe. He's a good friend of mine for, for a long time. If he puts it out there, you can pretty much bet he's right. You know, he's not one of these guys – uh, Mez that's going to, that just throws stuff. I mean, he knows they tell him personally, you know, he's got a great relationship with these coaches, including coach Saban. So as much as I wished you were right and it wasn't a done deal, it wasn't official. He wasn't the AD. He, he knows. And and he's right. If he reports it, then I, I'm, I would pretty much bank on it, unfortunately. So, oh yeah, man, I, mean, I can't I, even I, believe I, it. I, 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 I I've heard that he ha has met with the team. I um I was listening to uh, some interviews earlier as I was coming back to the house, and um and I, I believe he did, has already met with the team. I'm not for sure on that yet. 
Man, I, I, I got to tell you, the, the minute that he came to Tuscaloosa, um, it was just a different Alabama. You remember what life was like with Mike Shula. And honestly, after Gene Stallings left, the football program just was – it, it, it just really wasn't a winner. I mean, they had a couple years where they, where they, you know, put things together. 99, they did that with Mike Dubose, and then things fell apart. Dennis Franchoni had a year where he won 10 games but wasn't consistent. He took off. Um, and, then, and then Mike Shula had the, the 05 season where they won the Cotton Bowl, but they weren't contenders. They, they, they weren't able to beat the teams that were the best in college football that year. You know, they, they lost to – Obviously lost to Auburn because, you know, I mean, think about all the fingers that uh, <laughs> that were popped yeah. up because of him being there. It was part of losing five straight, uh, six in a row, and you count Saban's first Iron Bowl. But um, this is, you know, this is one of those deals where for 17 years, Alabama, because of Nick Saban, has been at the top of the mountain. And it's really hard to believe that it's been that long, Right. Um, and I remember being a student at Alabama, Brett, and and everyone talking about what it was like when Bear Bryant was the head coach and what Bear Bryant bought, brought to the table. And, and and then all of a sudden we got Nick Saban and it was, you know, big bowl games. It, it went from playing in Shreveport, Louisiana, to playing in the Rose Bowl, the Sugar Bowl, the Cotton Bowl, the Rose Bowl. I mean, all the major bowls Alabama covered. Um it's it's just unbelievable. Uh, Bama Hammer says that you know he saw it coming because Saban bought a fifteen million dollar home in Florida, and he owns five. And I, and people said that too. You know, I mean, I yeah. I think that that's that's good logic. I mean, you you start to build your life towards what it's going to be, but you know, this is the end of an era, and we have been so lucky to be a part of this. I mean, you know, as fans, as you know, I worked for the uh, Crimson Tide Sports Network when Nick Saban arrived and how cool that was, you know, to be a part of 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 all of those wins and all of those amazing games and to to go from being a student when we hardly ever won to being on top of the mountain. I mean, there's fan bases right now, guys, that are rejoicing because of the fact that Alabama um has seen the greatest coach of all time retire, you know? So, uh, man, I, I'm just sitting here. I'm, we're going to have to open the phones here in a, in a couple minutes and, and get what you just get your take on this guys, because I, I don't know, Brett, I, I normally have a lot to say <laughs> right. <laughs> but right now. I'm, I mean, I don't want to say, I, I'm shocked. I mean, even though we knew that it was a possibility, we p- reported on it. We talked about it. We tried to figure it out. Mick, you until, and I talked about it this morning, didn't we? I know. I know. Until now, uh-huh. you know, it just, I just didn't think that I, I don't know. I just kind of felt like we were past that window. You know, what yeah. does this mean toward, you know, for recruiting? You know, what does this mean to, uh, you know, Transfer. to the future of the program, right? You know, yeah. the guy that takes over, is it going to be Dan Lanning, you know? And and if it is, you know, what's that going to look like? I mean, there's a lot of questions there, but I guess what, what I kind of want to do right now is just talk about Alabama and Nick Saban, not who the future is and, and, and where we're going from here, but, um, you know, what happens next. And I, I think the commits do stay. I think when you commit to playing at a university – you you commit to playing there, guys. So I really feel like it. They will stay. Um, Lynn, yes, it does feel like a funeral, but we should celebrate like an like an Irish funeral. Like we we should celebrate the fact that this program is in great shape. And and honestly, at times this year, Nick Saban talked about being tired. Yeah, don't yeah. forget that. And yeah. when you're tired, you know what? Maybe it is time to to hang it up and and move on. You know, maybe it is. Maybe it is, but you have to remember this guy has given Alabama fans, all of us, 17 seasons of greatness. 201 wins, 29 losses, 123 players and counting in the NFL draft, 10 divisional titles, 9 SEC championships, 
Um, you know, 17 very good years uh, of, of football, and and it's going to be interesting to see who does fill those shoes. And, Mick, yeah, it's odd because we were talking this morning and we said, man, who's going to fill those, you know, shoes w one day, you know, and we felt like um, that it's going to be tougher to replace Saban than it was Coach Bryant. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and I believe that because it, uh, as good as Coach Bryant was, he did it in a different era and age of football. And Coach Saban is, is the greatest to ever do it, uh, in my opinion. And I don't know if he really liked the, the direction college football was going. No, I mean, who would? I mean, and, 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 and that may have had a lot to do with his thought process of, yeah, you know what? We're becoming semi-pro. Um, this is like, uh, we're having to pay, you know, we, we have this NIL stuff that we're trying, you know, doing and, and the, the game has changed so much. And, um, I, I think maybe he just said, you know what? I have done, I have done well in my career. And yeah. I, I don't have anything to prove to anyone. No. Uh, and you're exactly right, by the way. And, and, and January and I, sobriety. <laughs> I was going to ask. Brad, sorry. I, I mean, you know, who could blame him to want to go to Lake Burton or that big new house down, you know, in South Florida, wherever it is. Um, hell, I'd want to do that, you know. I want to do that now. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, and, and, and his grandkids, I think, may have a lot to do with it. Um, but uh, he, he deserves it, and uh, uh, we all hate to see him go, but uh, it's just something that we knew was going to come one day. We're just going to have to live with it, and it's going to make for a very interesting days and maybe weeks uh, uh, coming up. Yeah, and no doubt. Well, Brett, let me get to the, the phone. Let me bring on Chad Anderson, yes. our our buddy. Let me put Chad on the screen here, uh, Modern Lending. Uh, what's up, Catfish? What do you think, man? Man, like sick to my stomach. Yeah. Like, uh, it's one of those, um, I knew if Bama, I didn't know. I just said, if, I think if Bama won the national title, that it was the perfect time. Because he would have, he's already passed Bear in total, but he would have passed him in total at Alabama. Um, and then he would have, uh, you know, just, it would have worked. Um, like, it would have made sense. Everything would have added up. But um, doing it after a loss. Um, but, I mean, you you know, we said it earlier in the year, you picked up Angry Nick and Gordo. Mm -hmm. Like, it wasn't the same guy this year. Mm -mm. Um, it was different. Yeah. And so, yeah, I just one of those things that when you look back, you probably go, man, the writing was on the wall. Right. But, but nobody wanted to believe it. Um, I don't know, man, just honestly speechless. Um, that's like one of the few times just like sitting there thinking about it, it got choked up. Yeah. It's, like it's hard not to. Season. Well, this is my generation, Bear Bryant. You know, like I don't, I was not even alive when Bear coached. Right. So yeah. all I've got to go off of is stories and old footage and YouTube and all those things. But, um, but yeah, I mean, this is, this is Bear Bryant retiring. Well, we, we were there. Than Bear. Well, look, Chad, you and I were there at Alabama together when we stunk. You know, and, and this guy yeah, came in yeah, and I, brought I back the culture of Alabama football. I mean, he just did. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it, it also hurts because, like, when I went to – like, I grew up with Stalins. And then, you know, the Dubo there and the Franchoni era, and it was obviously pretty rough. Yeah. Um, but – yeah, Shula in college, but Shula was nothing but a stopgap. Everybody kind of figured that the whole point, the whole time. But, um, you know, when Saban was there, you know, I don't know Saban, but I just had that kind of, like, connection. Like, I don't know, because I was in my prime watching Alabama. When Nick Saban came, I was 22, almost 23. 
and now I'm 38. So, you know, those are like the best years ever to attend games. Mm -hmm. Like 22 to 38 is about as good as it gets. You yeah. Know? Like, that's a great window. I was at his first press conference because I was at the student radio station in Tuscaloosa. And I got uh, Becky Hawk, who was used to be the basketball SID, um, got me and a friend in for his first ever press conference in Tuscaloosa. Um, yeah, and I went to all the natties and all the SEC titles except for COVID. And I don't know, man, just it's surreal. And um, we're finally going to get to answer the question that every single media person asks every year to get the phones to ring, and that is who's the successor. Yeah, yeah, I guess and so. We, we're gonna we're gonna get to find that out. Yeah, well, I guess that's something I'll ask you. I mean, I get like people have said that they believe it's Dan Lanning. Obviously, um, if you were Greg Byrne, thank God first off that Greg Byrne is the AD and not someone like Bill Battle. You know, like I mean, I'm sorry, yeah. but Bill Battle was a buffoon, and um, Mal, uh, Mal Moore was awesome. And and this guy's awesome too. He's not going to mess this up. I really do believe that he's not going to mess this up. Um, who, who, give me your short list, Chad. I, I want to do two things real quick. This is why I think he retired now. I, I think he retired now because I think I think the game was changing to a to a game he doesn't want to be a part of. Yeah, right. Because Nick Nick Saban was the greatest ever at recruiting and then motivating and developing and yep. getting you into the NFL. Yeah, you're nailing it right now. And with the and with the transfer portal and the NIL, look, Alabama is not a team like Lane Kiffin, all credit to him. He's built now a powerhouse, call it a powerhouse, through the portal. Nick Saban like doesn't do that. He does get a portal guy, a couple of portal guys. Jameer Gibbs was portal. Overton is portal. You know, there are others. There Jamison Williams was portal. There are some guys who are portal, but it's not the whole team. And guys, a lot of times, stay at Alabama a little bit more, you know, unless they're just freshmen who yeah, right. don't play. So we don't have the I mass with, exodus. I think, with, no, I think with the portal and NIL, it was just turning into a game that he didn't want to be a part of. Um, so that's one. I just wanted to make sure that was clear to everybody. Yeah, no, I'm with and you. Then, and then number two, short list. If it's me and it's realistic, um, you know, I think Dan Lanning is probably number one. Um, I've heard from you and others that as well as Kiffin has done at Ole Miss is that he kind of just scarred the possibility of ever doing it at Alabama based yeah. on what he did during his time at Alabama. Yeah, I'm telling you right uh, now. Because otherwise, Kiffin, if he had – Sorry, Chad. Let me say well, this. If he had he, – Just real quick, hold yeah, that right. thought. I'm just going to say this. There's a there's a graveyard right behind Bryant Denny Stadium, and Kiffin's got more skeletons in Tuscaloosa than that graveyard. Yeah, <laughs> it's just the way I, it I, is. Okay, I'm surprised. keep I would going, not be keep surprised. going. I'm just throwing that out there because I know some of you guys would like to have Lane <laughs> Kiffin. He's not going to get this job. Yeah, I I don't think so either. Um, I would say if he didn't have all those extra bones laying around, he'd be perfect. Um, that that he would probably be the number one guy. Yeah. Right. But that's, that's probably it, you know, um, cause landing is not a guarantee. Landing is just highly regarded, went to Oregon, you know, uh, Oregon was already set up. Landing's a portal guy. You know, he just did really, really well. Right. Um, but you still have to execute though. I mean, and his teams look good and but it's just not like when we got Nick Saban, we knew it was just a matter of time before we won a national title. It was just a matter of time. Right. You don't know that. But I also don't know that there's a coach out there that you know that you're going to win a national title. You know? And, and so the names I would just like spitball immediately. I'm not like recommending these or like I'm just, just throw them out there. Throw them out there. Class. Right. Yeah. Enough clout. I'm going to tell you mine um, when you're done. You know? Yeah, Dan Lanning, Lane Kiffin, um, even though I don't think it'll be Lane, like he's got the clout at this point. Um, Brian Kelly has the clout. Uh, mm. You know, if you go a direction of like Lance Leopold, you know, I, that to me is a really dicey move. Um, yeah, but I, 
Dabo's probably going to get consideration. I hope to God it's not Dabo. <laughs> D'Amico Ryan, you hey, know, D'Amico, D'Amico cool. Ryan gets named all the time, but there's to me no way after one year in the NFL and right. making the playoffs yeah. and that franchise like with so much upside. Um, you know, you want to get real nasty and dirty and really get in the swamp with some people, but you'd win football games. You could go Urban Meyer. Oh wow. Um, you know, there <laughs> there are some crazy names you could put out there, right? That and I'm only naming them based on could they handle the job and could they win you a championship? Right, right, right. All those names could, right? I mean, you just don't know with Lanning or Kiffin, but all those other names could uh, at least do it. But what what's your short list? Well, look, here, here's mine. I mean, and I made this a couple of days ago. I almost made a video, and then I thought, well, I, I'm not going to. But number five on my list would be Dan Lanning. And, and it's partly because he coached at Alabama, he coached at Georgia, did a great job both places. He's at Oregon, he can recruit, he's tough and mean, and uh, I think he could come in and, and, and handle the job, and, uh, and, and that's one. Um, D'Amico Ryans, and I know he's a Texans, the guy's been great, man. He's not a saving guy, he's an Alabama guy, and he's a hell of a football coach. You know, you, he would be someone, I don't know how he recruits, but I know that he gets our culture. And um, he's a winner, man. He gets the X's and O's. And, I mean, he's one of the best coaches in the NFL, young coaches right now, that's going. I mean, look at what he did with the 49ers and then, you know, obviously uh, what he did, you know, this year. Number three would be Steve Sarkeesian. You know, I mean, like, if you're Alabama, it's going to be hard to get him out of yeah, Texas. I on Sark. But I would I would go after after him. Number two is Dabo. Yeah, Dabo needs a change of scenery. Obviously, we we know that he's going to have to figure out the transfer portal, but the guy can recruit. He's still recruiting guys out of the state of Alabama, some of the best players. He loves the state. He gets the culture. Uh, he's won national championships. I think that if some of the top targets, the, like the Dan Lannings, don't take the job, that there's a chance that he would take it. I think he needs a change. And I think that he would be a guy that if he came in, all the people that don't like him would like him really fast. I think he would come in and, and do a really good job and a change of, of scenery for him might be good. But I'm going to tell you the number one guy that Alabama should go after, and they should do the same thing they did with Nick Saban. They should throw every stinking dollar that they have at Kirby, every dollar, 15 million, 16 million. It doesn't matter. You're going to make the money back with the winning. He's the only guy that could step in and keep things going exactly the way that they're going right now. And if you're Alabama, he gets the culture. He helped build it. He has a, he's awesome. The way that he, he's done everything has been amazing at Georgia. I know that's his alma mater, but money talks. And, you know, the bottom line is this, the one thing that you can do to guarantee winning is get the head coach, and and having Kirby Smart would guarantee us. Plus, it would take him away from Georgia. So, fifteen million. There's no limit on how much money you can spend. I would. I'd put every dollar I had in the Kirby. Kirby's interesting. I mean, I would have never even considered it just because he's that is all the modern. I guess it never hurts to, to make the phone call. Um, Sark is Pay one him. I've had on my list. Twenty million. Who cares? It. You're Where gonna make the money back, Chad. Yeah. Yeah, you will. Um, you, uh, you you think this has anything to do with Bill Belichick? Uh, <laughs> been, I don't want Belichick. I, was, we I don't were, want Belichick. We were, <laughs> we were hoping that Bill Belichick would be uh, <laughs> would be the defensive he, coordinator. <laughs> <laughs> what about well, we gave Kirby a lifetime contract? Nick was his. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Kirby for sure would be my number one. I I never even thought about it because I don't think it's realistic. But um, yeah, and actually going back, I mean, like I said, I missed it off the cuff. But Sark would be my number one. Yes, Sark, Sark would be great. Like, that's the first phone call you probably. And the pitch here's the pitch to Sark. It's I understand you're happy in Texas and you just made that program, you know, into a playoff contender. But Sark. We are the reason you got the Texas job. Nick Saban's the reason you got the Texas job. You were an alcoholic who came through the rehab program, <laughs> who bolted to the Falcons, who got fired from the NFL, and Saban gave you a second chance, a third chance, 
got you a national title and you went to Texas. And that's fine. I don't blame Sark for taking the Texas job. I would have done that too. I'm just saying that that's the pitch to Sark. You you, you almost have to guilt trip him yeah. <laughs> into taking it because Take that's it. the angle. Because Texas matches the money. Yeah, you the money will be Texas there. Money. Yeah. All right, last thing. I'm going to put this on the screen, Chad. And then uh, thanks for jumping on, man. And we miss you. Come back and, and hang out with us again uh, real soon. Um, yeah, well, he, here's a oh, question well. right here. Uh, where does this leave recruiting this season? No DC, no head coach, and uh, and a twelve year old OC. Where, where where do you think this leaves the uh, the the recruiting and everything else for Alabama, the roster, if you will? I mean, that was the first thing I thought about. Um, is you know what does this do with Julian Sands? You know what does it do with Ryan Williams? Um, what does it do with Overton, who just came over? Yep. Um, what does it do with all these guys? Because when this happens, you know, kind of like remember West Virginia basketball when Bob Huggins was pushed out? Yeah. I mean, this is what happened. The the portal opens for 30 days, and now it's a free-for-all. Yep. And so, um, you know, that that's the really, really difficult part um, on all of this is – Here's the only thing, Nick, is that as detailed as Nick Saban is, and as I'm still sick to my stomach just talking about it. I know. As detailed it, as he is. It feels like a funeral. And as, as much it does. Uh, well, you thought last week was a funeral after the Rose Bowl. I know. I did. I'm so uh, sick that I didn't go now. I mean, uh, I was planning on going to Houston. Yeah. yeah. Brutal, man. Um, but I just. The way Nick is, I have a hard time believing. He didn't just come up with this idea this week. You know what I mean? Like, Nick has had this in his head and at least thought about it. And at some point, I just – there's no way he just dropped it on everybody with nobody knowing. Had to be somebody who knew. And I'm not saying a lot of people, but – Probably his wife, you know, right? Greg Byrne had to know. Well, yeah, Greg Byrne had to know, though. I mean, people had to at least have an idea. Um, you know, what's crazy is somebody made the joke in a text to me is dust off the plane tracker because Alabama fans haven't had to use the plane tracker in the iPhone era. Yeah, right. Think about that. Yeah. We haven't used the plane tracker in an iPhone era. Yeah. Uh, wow. So I go back and look like is the Alabama plane been anywhere in the last week other than other than the Rose Bowl, you know, has it been anywhere? Yeah. Um, and just kind of see and check it out. But there's, there had to have been a plan. Um, and yeah, they're going to obviously have to do some damage control. But with the portal and the way it works, I just can't imagine that there's not a quick hire, you know, by this weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you're, that's, a, because, that's a great point. You know, Got to get them in. Yeah. Yeah. Well, man. Got to get them in. Well, Roll Tide, brother, thanks for uh, talking to us. And, um, and man, we'll 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 do a show together soon. I mean, we've been talking about this for a long time. At least we got to live through the entire Saban era. Think about that. Yeah, I know. What a what a what a run. What a ride. Yeah. Roll tide, friend. Roll tide, Steven. All right, Chad Anderson. Uh Brett, before I go back to the phone lines again, um, and uh man, I just can't even I mean I it's just so hard to just sit here and say this, but you know, hopefully, I mean, I, I, Alabama should have a pretty good war chest right now to go out. Plus, Nick Saban's salary—I mean, he's the he's the highest paid coach in college football. You got that as a as a base. I think you go out and pay as much money as you can and get Kirby. You make him tell you no. Go sit on. Go go do the uh, the Mal Moore and go to go to Athens and sit in his driveway. Yeah. Until he, until he calls the law. Yeah, yeah. Until he calls the law. Call the law. <laughs> um, oh, uh, man. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, Chad brought up some great points. Uh, you know, the portal's going to open up for 30 days now that to retire, uh, Saban retired. But, uh, you know, he, he brought up a good point. And it got me to thinking about um, the way Saban does. You, you know, do you think that maybe he had a discussion with uh, the athletic director and or, or maybe even the president, I don't know, 
and kind of let his intentions be known to give them a little bit of a heads up and, you know, maybe where they could prepare and, and, uh, without, you know, um, you know, and, and I agree that we, we've got to get someone in place pretty quick. Yeah. And, well, and you're, and, and you're right, but it has to be the right, it has to be the right guy. I mean, uh, I would, I would rather hire the right guy, but, uh, you know, instead of hiring the wrong one too soon. Yeah. But, but um, it's going to be an interesting few days for sure. Yeah. All right. Well, Brett, let's go back to the phone lines again and uh, keep the conversation going. Um, who's this and where are you calling from? So we lost you right when we were answering. All right. Let's go back to the phone lines again. Who's this and where are you calling from? Hey, Nick. It's Ice Man. Ice Man, man. It's ice, Ice Baby. Sad. Sad day. Yeah, it's it's a sad day, but you know the um, it, it's crazy because I was actually just getting my hair cut. I'm about to go to dinner with my wife, um, and uh, um, I saw that my brother called me, and he's like, and so I answered real quick, like, "Hey, I need to call you back in like five minutes." But when he responded, he sounded like really upset. I was like, "All right, what's going on?" And he tells me Coach Saban retires, and I'm like, "Well, hold on, what?" Yeah, shock. Um, that's. And, you know, it's so crazy because I, I messaged you a couple of days ago when I saw Kevin Steele retire, and I thought, that's just so strange because I thought Kevin Steele had a couple more years too. Right. Um, and I guess there's a lot of smoke <laughs> that, that we just we didn't even realize was happening. It was like a thief in the night, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, well, he, but, he coached uh, – Immediately – He he he. I got to give him credit, man. From the minute he got the Tuscaloosa until today – the guy has given us 110%, man. Yep. I mean, like, you, who does that in anything? Absolutely. Yeah, we, we've we got nothing but but the best, and, and, and the results show it. Um, and, you know, I, I, I do feel sad because I'm going to miss um, seeing him on the sidelines and uh, making us proud by uh, cussing out players on the sidelines, you know? <laughs> Getting in that um, But – does such a good job, but you know, I, I'm so happy that we got to witness it. You know, I, I grew up hearing of the legend of Bear Bryant and, and just thinking like, wow, that's so crazy. We'll never see that again. I remember seeing, seeing Auburn and Georgia and all, all the other fans in, 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 you know, the state of Alabama because Georgia fans are everywhere, including Alabama. Yeah, and, uh, great fan base. And, and they're happy. Yeah, they were all happy. And heck, they were doing the fear of the paw or whatever it was. You know, they had that win streak on us. And and um, I just remember, like, just hating it. I was like, man, this sucks. It, it really sucks. But I, I loved Alabama, always have. And Saban really, really changed that. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll start with this. My all-time favorite win under Coach Saban has got to be when we told LSU that they cannot cross the 50 yard line. No, I was there. You remember that one? No, I was there. I was there. I sat with our friend Cheryl Yingling of Yingling Logger. She got oh us in front row of the, of the upper deck, about the 50 yard line. And it was awesome. Awesome. Oh, that's, that's amazing. You, uh, I just, I remember being so mad that we lost LSU. That was like when I really, really started to hate LSU over all the other rivals, you know, um, just, I, I don't know why, but after that year, I, I was no, not more satisfied to see a team get absolutely dominated by Alabama than LSU. So that's why that is my favorite all time win. Um, and, and I'll give you a quick short list too, to give you guys a couple of different names to think about. Just kind of, this one's kind of tongue in cheek, kind of funny. Um, it was me as a fan, and I could just have any any coach step in right now. I really, really, really like going to the Miami Dolphins and picking off the head coaches. Yeah, he's a cool dude. So he is, he is, and and he works really well with Tua. So uh, that that would be just a just a random one that like you know just to kind of make everyone just turn their heads and say like, what the heck? They hired that guy, right? Um, and and the other one is you know I was saying. And I don't think it's going to happen, but I was saying that when Saban retires, I hope Kevin Steele is going to be the guy to kind of step in for a couple of years. Cause I think that he still kind of has that mentality to, you know, 
to run the program the same way Saban did. Um, you know, when you listen to the the way that the um, players on the defense talk about how they responded to Kevin Steele as soon as he showed up, they said the way that he talked made them want to play harder. Right. And that, losing Kevin Steele, by the way, uh, we, you know, I know it's going to get overshadowed by uh, Nick Saban, but that's another one. Um, I mean, if he has that kind of commanding presence for the defense, imagine what he could do for the entire team. And and, and it's going to be a huge loss for us, uh, losing both him and Coach Saban. So, um, yeah. anyways, I'm going I'm about to leave you guys on this because I'm about to take my wife to dinner. Um, but I love you all and roll tide. I love you, Iceman. Roll tide, brother. Thanks for calling in. All right, Brett, let's take one more. We'll throw it out there, Brett. Uh, one name that hasn't come up that the Tuscaloosa News uh, uh, had has mentioned as a possible replacement would be Mike Norvell of Florida State. Oh wow, wouldn't that be something? Yeah, would not. Wouldn't that be something? All right, let's go back to the phone lines again. Uh, who's this, and where are you calling from? Um, Eli Garcia from Westaco, Texas. What's up? What's up? Nah, I was at I was at work, and all my friends texted me on. Snapchat, I couldn't believe it. Dude, it's couldn't unbelievable, it. man. I mean, I we're all just sitting here shocked. To be honest, I was I'm an Auburn fan, so it's like what the heck, you know? The state of Alabama is like wow. Yeah, I mean, and look, I I remember when you know when th- these are it, it's even as an Auburn fan, and I know it's it, it's probably. Uh, I mean, obviously, I wouldn't want Saban in in the state, and I, it really gives it changes the dynamic of recruiting. Um, you know, to have yeah. one of the greatest recruiters of all time out. Uh, but you know, Auburn was de- is definitely moving in the right direction with um, you know with what they've been able to do. Hugh Freeze is you know Nick, so, Nick Saban really likes him. I mean, like tried to get him to come to Alabama, but I mean, I, it's just shocking to us. And uh, and I'm sure even the world of college football, as much as you probably hate Alabama, you have to appreciate Nick Saban, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's true. Well, just like I said, I'm shocked too. Um, God bless you guys. Um, thank you for having me on the show. Yeah, thanks, man. And uh, and yeah, we appreciate, it, man. Good call. Thank you. Uh, Brett, we, I mean, as we sit here and, and kind of take, take calls and, um, you know, and, and then look at the comment section, let, let me say this guys, before you panic and think that we're going to lose, you know, all of the, the Ryan Williams of the world, just, just let's see how this progresses. Because the one thing that I will say is Nick Saban knew that it was time to go. I mean, he knew that, like, he's the guy that's coaching. And if he says he's tired, he's tired. You gotta, you want to have a, a, you know, a, a young coach that can come in and, and do all this stuff and and not feel tired. Uh, that doesn't mean that we don't love him. That doesn't mean that we don't want him to stay. But I mean, man, it's it's still unbelievable to me. Feel free to call into work tomorrow, guys. You you got an excuse. This is uh this is going to be a uh, national day. Of- uh, a statewide day of mourning tomorrow. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, All right, let's go back to the phone lines, Brett, and take another call here. Who's this and where you calling from? Hey, my name's Sean. This Scottsboro, Alabama. Hey, what's what, up? I mean, you know as well you know as well as I do that Coach Saban is not a spur of the moment person. He didn't just wake up this morning and decide to retire. Do you think he had a uh, hand in? and selecting the next coach and probably already have it planned out to keep the players on the team and the recruiting class together. Yeah. I mean, I I would think so. Right. I mean, I, I, I don't, I'm not sure what's going on behind the scenes, but I just don't think that Nick Saban would just be like, okay, well I'm out of here and not have a game plan. I mean, he's been the best at game planning since he got the Tuscaloosa. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I, I think they've already. I think they've already got their coach, and they were just waiting for all this to play out, and then it'll be announced. Do you think that he'll help recruit the next coach? I mean, my personal just. I mean, I, of course, I don't know Saban personally, but uh, I do think that before he ever, you know, talked to the team, I think he had. They already knew who the coach was going to be, and already had everything worked out. Yeah. 
Yeah, I I would. You know, this this season and Chad brought up some great points. Brett and I've been on here talking about it, but he's right about saying that, uh, you know, that that we found angry Saban on the way to Gordo. Right. And, and I joked about yep. that on the way to Mississippi State, and it was great to see him back. But, you know, even I, I noticed some things this season that weren't the way that things were done. Jermaine Burton, kind of some of the penalties and some of the stuff that he did. He was a great receiver, but just just didn't it, it didn't always look Alabama ish, you know, scoring and taunting and all that stuff. And and I wish him the best, you know, but in the NFL. But I mean, I'm seeing that. And then the the press conference, uh, some of the players talking, you know, I didn't like um, the the talk about Bill O'Brien telling um, uh, Milro to. Uh, to, to change positions. I mean, he's right, you know, and I'm sure he felt that way, but that, that's the kind of stuff that we just didn't really have in the past. You know, you kind of kept that to yourself. You, you, you went about your business, hand the football to the, you know, to the uh, ref when you score. And, um, you know, the, and, and maybe that's different now because of the NIL and the transfer portal. I mean, if coach gets on to you, Ryan Anderson comes in here and does a show and he talks about, <laughs> a lot of times how hard Saban was on him when he got to Alabama. And, and and it sounds to me like he appreciates all that tough love because it made him not just a great football player and a guy that got to the NFL and did it there, but also a great businessman. I mean, he's a guy in the community down here that's 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 working and is hard at work and 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 dedicated to that. And uh, you know, Mike Johnson, who's another guy that played for him and is a is a friend of the show said that he doesn't know if he'd have the success in his life if, if it wasn't for Nick Saban. And, you know, we'll have those guys on to talk about that as well and, and give their take on it. Um, but, you know, at the same time, it's like uh, that, you know, that tough love, it, it, it was part of what made Nick Saban so great. And it's hard to do that in, in a day and age where you can just get up and walk away if you hear something that somebody doesn't want to tell you. Plus, when you get older, you know, maybe you don't feel like doing all that stuff anymore. You know, you, 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 well, I'll, I'll say this. I'll say this and I'll get off so somebody else can get on. I mean, my first call would have been to Kirby, of course, wrote yeah. him a blank check. And when he turned it down because he's not going to leave Georgia. <laughs> it would, I mean, I know what you said about Kiffin earlier. He's a loose card, but he, he would be my second choice, if not Sark. And if, I mean, I would be happy with Jeremy Pruitt if they could get him back, honestly. But I know that's not going to happen. Yeah. Well, Sean, man, roll tide, brother. Keep your head up, and thanks for calling in. Roll tide. Oh, I'm not down. I, I appreciate Coach. I mean, I, I'm happy for him and his family. I wish him nothing but the best, and thank him for the 17 years he gave us. Yeah. Well, I think from Scottsboro down here to Fairhope, you know, over to – uh you know, to Oxford and to, you know, all around this state and honestly all around the world because Bama fans are everywhere, man. We just – all of us love Nick Saban. I mean, just love the Absolutely. guy. Absolutely. And like, like I said, I, I thought I would be – like I thought I'd be crying right now, but I'm not. I'm actually happy for him and looking forward to the next chapter. Yeah, I'm, I'm about to cry. <laughs> <laughs> Shock. All right, roll tide. Hey, guys. roll tide, Sean. Thank you, man. All right, Brett, uh, before I go to the next call, any thoughts? Uh, he brought up a good point, and uh, uh, I thought about this earlier. How much say do you think Saban may have in selecting the next head coach, or is he going to be the type that says, all right, I'm out the door, clean out my, clo- clean out my office, and I'm done? Um, you know, I'm sure I think they'll he's have gonna to have a say, Brett. Yeah, I, I, do. I do too. Surely so. After 17 years. And, you know, I think he's, he will still have some sort of involvement in the community, I think. He's he's done so much for the Tuscaloosa community. And I think that um, that he, that will continue. And, and um, you know, uh, but, yeah, I think he'll have a say in, in, in the next coach. Yeah, I'm with you. Uh, first off, James, thank you for the super chat. And you're right. No one ever replaces Nick Saban, brother. You're exactly right. And, Lynn, thank you for the super chat as well. Uh, great friends of the show, and um, I appreciate all you guys. All right, let's go back to the phone line again and uh, talk to some more of you guys and see what you think. Um, who's this and where you calling from? Hey, this is Miles calling from Jersey. 
What's up, Miles? How you doing? Not much, man. This is my first time tuning in the show, but uh, everything I'm I'm hearing, I'm, I'm, I'm a new uh, supporter now, guys. So uh, hats off to the show and everything. But uh, where are you at in New Jersey? Uh, I don't know if you guys. South Jersey. Okay. Yeah, I used to live in Heightstown back when I was a kid. Okay. Okay. Like north- I'm uh, around the Bronze County area. Oh yeah, yeah. I know where that is. But uh. Back to the topic, man. Uh, it's definitely a sad day. It's definitely a gut punch. But um, I don't know if you guys talked about it, but what do you guys think about uh, getting Daniel Lanning from Oregon? Yeah, I mean, I think that – honestly, I mean, I feel like there's a lot of momentum for Dan Lanning. He obviously did a great job. He's tough. I think that that kind of fits our mentality, you know, with Alabama football. You want someone tough. If you can't get Kirby – go and get Dan Lanning. I mean, he, he, he coached under Kirby. He coached under Nick Saban. He's a young guy who went to Oregon and immediately you saw an impact. Um, and he can recruit, uh, he gets the culture and he's a, he's a top candidate. I mean, I, I think that if they hired Dan Lanning, I I don't think that it would be a bad hire. I, I mean, I, honestly, I mean, I I would say that to me, he's probably the odds on favorite right now to get the job. If he wants to come back to the South and and take over a program and have a chance to win and win a lot, this is the time. I mean, Alabama's got to have somebody that's going to come in and immediately talk to the the players that are here, the players that are committed to come and and convince those guys that you know nothing's going to change. I mean, we're we're going to continue to be Alabama football that they're going to keep being a part of the program and uh you know, he, he I I wouldn't be disappointed by that hire, honestly. Cuz if you saw what he done with uh Bo Nix this year, I mean, I know Bo Nix is a t- different player from uh Jalen, but if anybody, Jalen should be, I'll be uh, pushing for him to come down that way, make you know, like another Heisman. He's because I mean, Jalen will be a not uh, like he could be a top top four Heisman candidate next year, I think. So uh, I'll be really pushing for him to come down there and uh, change that scheme. I know he's a defensive mind guy, but uh, I definitely think he could def- definitely come down there and change some stuff. I wish that we could have won the championship this year. I mean, now that he's retiring, you know, I was, there was a, there was a part of me that kind of hoped that because they didn't win it, that maybe that would have, uh, you know, kept that fire burning for one more run for Nick Saban. Um, I would have loved to see what he could do in the 12 team playoff, but uh, you know, but obviously he knows him and, you know, he felt like now was the time. And, I mean, you look back over it. I mean, the guy won more 10 – had more 10-win seasons. I don't even know – we we won 10 games every year after, what, 2007? It's amazing. Yeah. But I uh, appreciate you guys. Have hey, a good day, man. Hey, thanks, Miles, and roll tide, brother. Thanks for calling in. And uh, make sure that all you guys that are hanging out right now, subscribe to the channel, like, uh, comment. We want you to be a part of it. And, um, you know, we're here doing this. Kim, good to, good to see you on here, Kim. I, I'm shocked that Nick Sh- Saban's um, leaving too, and we all think he's the best coach ever. I, I, don't, I, I don't know that there could have been a better person to come to Alabama. And it's sad because, you know, you bridge all of these things, you know, the, the, um, the Mal Moore, you know, the, 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 the legacy, the winning – you know, all of the championships, but it's not, it's more than that. It's the respect that Alabama demands. Uh, it, it's the loyalty that the players have for the program, you know, and, and, and Kirby's captured that as well, obviously under Nick Saban's tutelage, but to have a program where the players put the program and each other before they do themselves is it, it, so rare these days, Brett. I mean, yeah. and, and I think to me, that's what I'm worried about the most is, you know, it, I see what happened at Florida State, and they had a great football team and a wonderful season. And then when it didn't go their way, you know, uh, the team just all left. You know, and and it's like, uh, man, I just can't yeah. even. I, I it's so hard to put this in in words. But you know, part of doing this job is that this is what we do. We got to get on here, good times and bad, and uh, you know. 
he had 155 SEC wins. Only Bear Bryant, who had 159 wins, uh, has more. You know, think about that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. How In incredible. the conference. How, how incredible is that? How incredible is that? And I was, um, I was looking. Um, you were talking about the Vegas odds. Guess what? Three minutes ago, they were updated. Yeah. Who, they, who they, have? they have landing at uh, top of the list, plus 300. Dabo, plus 350. Mike Norvell, wow. plus 450. A name that we have not mentioned, and I want to get your thought about this guy as a replacement, James Franklin. Mm. Well, Six I'm going to tell you this. I love James Franklin. I like the guy, too. I, I loved him from his time at Maryland as Ralph Regan's uh, head coach in waiting. And when Maryland messed up and let him go, you know, he's gone to Penn State. Uh, he's They beat everyone they're supposed to beat, but they haven't been able to get over the hump against the top-level teams. Right. You know, I don't know how it is recruiting in Penn State, but I know that recruiting here, even the worst coaches that we've had have been able to recruit. You know, sure. like – it, it, not on the level of Nick Saban, but no. um, Dale says no way to James Franklin. You know, I, I I don't know. I mean, I think James Franklin's a good coach, though. Um, what about Dion? What about Coach Prime? Uh, I, Five thousand. He's at the bottom of the list. But, is he? Yeah. I I mean, that would bring that would be. <laughs> uh, I I you know Brian Anderson loves to mess with me because I. I was a Cowboys fan as a kid, man, and I loved Deion Sanders. I, I've got a couple of uh, Deion jerseys from my Cowboy days before I became a Ravens fan. And uh, still, I, I don't know. But I just don't know if that, that would work here. I'm guessing that you, you're going to go with someone who, uh, who, who's been part of what we're doing. I mean, I, ju I just think that it's one of those times where, you know, we, and we were talking about this today, Brett about when Bear Bryant left mm -hmm. and it was Ray Perkins that was the guy that stepped in. Right. And uh and Ray Perkins did a did a good job. He didn't he didn't win a championship, it but he he did a good job. The program wasn't in the spot though that it is now when Bear Bryant left. You know they they were they were in the Liberty Bowl his last year. This team just right. got out of the college football playoff, lost in overtime to the national champions. And uh, and has a number two recruiting class, has a lot of guys coming back. The cupboard's full if, you know, we don't have a mass exodus. So, I mean, I, you know, I'm, I'm curious as to um, what move they make, but maybe it is Dan Lanning. I mean, you know, it, it's got to be somebody that can come in and just pick, take the baton and run with it. Washington coach is on the list. You know what? Uh, What's his name? DeBoer? DeBoer, I believe. Kayla DeBoer? Kayla DeBoer, yeah. I don't know much about him other than when he was the offensive coordinator at Indiana, they went from being a bad program to being very competitive really fast. Yeah. And then, you know, and obviously he had Michael Penix there, and he had Michael Penix who uh, who, who played a hell of a game in the uh, national championship but had a great season. You know, yeah, I mean, I, it, you – the good thing is that these names that are being listed right now are all great coaches. You know, in the, in the past, when coaches retire, you know, you look around and you go, um, you know, we we value this job a lot, but the, the, do the other coaches value the job? You know, do, do what are what are you know what I'm saying? Or do they want? Do you want to be the guy that comes in after the guy? Right. So, I mean, he, I, he's going to be the type of person that wants to leave the program in great hands. Right. Um, and, and I, I, and that leads me back to, I think he's going to have some sort of say in this. Um, the only other coach on the list that I don't even think we have uh, mentioned him. is Mike Vrabel. Yeah. Who just got fired by the Titans. Don't know how he can recruit, but he can coach Titans fans. Weren't happy about that. Right. Um, yeah, but I, I don't I don't I just don't think that I think he's kind of an NFL guy. Yeah, that's an NFL guy, but one name obviously not on the list is Kirby. Well, that'd be mine. I mean, I 
I don't yeah, know. Yeah. I'd, I'd, uh, I'd do everything I could to, for him to say no. You oh, know, yeah, hey, yeah. What, what, what is it that you want? And then we'd say, okay, you know, just like when Saban. I mean, it was like when, when, when Saban had problems with people, they left. You know, like we, yeah. he, 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 we didn't let the, 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 the politics at Alabama. I'm going to tell you this right now. The politics at Alabama athletic department, um, sometimes with boosters, it had gotten to a point with some of these coaches where they felt like they couldn't even do their job, but they right. didn't have the stroke to go in there and say, Hey, I'm doing this. You guys sit back and relax. Nick right. Saban showed up. And from that minute on, you didn't hear about that stuff anymore. You didn't hear about the boosters and in, in the, in the, you know, the, the, the personnel people in the athletic department or any of that stuff. Nick Saban from the minute he got there until today ran the show. Ran the show, and uh, and got it done. Yeah. So. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're exactly right, and I think that was a, you know, something that you know they told him was, look, coach, this is this we're no one will interfere with you. This is your baby. This is your program. You do you. Here's the checkbook. You do exactly what you want to do. Well, it was, it was his. Yeah, Brad, it was his way or the highway. Yeah, and and the guy produced more first round draft picks than he lost ball games. 44 <laughs> first round draft picks and 29 losses. Give me a break. Wow. That is incredible, man. The <laughs> stats crazy. The stats are just unbelievable. And love the comments. Annie Mam says, uh, wonderful career. You're exactly right. It was a wonderful career. Yeah. Uh Bama Charlie, you're you're with me, man. I mean, I'm saying you give the guy a lifetime contract to Kirby and as much money as he wants and say, here you go, man. I don't know. I mean, look, he's got it set up pretty good now. The only guy that could beat him was Nick Saban. <laughs> <laughs> the, the only games he lost to were to Saban. Yeah. Wow. Which is crazy. Crazy. Yeah. Well, Mick, I hate to bow out, but I have a uh, banquet I've got to go to at six. So, all right. Well, you go um, do that, Brett. Great, to, great hanging out with you here. You, you too. Yeah. And uh, roll tight, everyone. Don't. Uh, I know it's a, it's a sad day, but um, uh, roll tight, everyone. And we're gonna we're gonna find a, re uh, a guy that will come in and coach this football team. I was gonna say a replacement. You can't replace the goat, but we'll find someone to coach these these, these guys up. All right, brother. Roll Tide, man. Roll tide, you guys uh, that are hanging out, if you want to get in on the uh, conversation, give us a call, 256-242-5022, and uh, jump in, and, and let's talk about this. Uh, comment section, you guys keep cranking it up as well. Um, just, you know, as we sit here kind of in, in shock that Nick Saban is retiring from Alabama. I mean, it, it really is unbelievable to uh to see where we are right now and uh you know and 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 kind of you know try to figure this all out you know uh you know where where are we going to go and uh and we knew that this day was going to come i mean it's it, it's not like that this was going to be for you know something that lasted forever but 17 years for one coach in one one place is a long time um and I, I just really, in a way, like I'm sad. I think, you know, on one hand, you, you almost want to cry because you, you love him. I saw uh, our, our, our buddy 18 Wheeler uh, saying that he's got to pull over and cry. I mean, it's, it's just like kind of just the, the whole the dynamic of this is unbelievable to me, you know, just, just unbelievable. Um, you know, that, that this is, this is happening right now, but, but it was something that, you know, um, it's just one of those things that, I mean, in time, you knew that it was, it was a possibility. And, um, you know, that's kind of where we are right now. Um, <laughs> Brett, Brett just sent me a text that they're rolling tumors corner. You know, hopefully they won't be rolling Tumor's Corner once they see who we get. But let's go back to the phone lines again and uh, and talk some more about this. Who's this, and, Tumor's Corner. Who's this and where are you calling see. from? 
Hey, Mick, how you doing? Uh, ben Catalano from West Orange, New Jersey. Hey, what's up, Ben? How you doing? Good, thanks. Good. How are you? I mean, uh, I guess I'm in shock like everybody else. Yeah. I said, and I, 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 I feared this day would come, and it's here. Uh, obviously, I have the same question as everybody else. Who's going to take over? But, Mick, what's going to happen to all the recruits? So many players come to Alabama wanting to play for Saban. Now he's gone. What do you think is going to happen to well, some of the players and some of the recruits coming in? You know, the, 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 that's a great question, Ben. And, and I'll tell you, like, it's anytime you commit to playing, you pit, you really commit to the school. As much as, you know, we all love Nick and they did come to play for him from everywhere. I mean, like, and this is a – I mean, we had players coming from Germany and Canada, <laughs> a bunch from California and all over the place, Texas – but you are committing to the college, you know, and, and just because, you know, he's leaving, I, I'm thinking that if it was me, I'm going to wait and see who's taking over and what they say when they take over. You know, you have, uh, you know, from mm -hmm. what Chad said, and I, I, I really wasn't even vested in this, uh, versed in it anyway that you have a 30 day window to decide if you want to stay or go. So you'll have some time to think about it. And that coach, when they come in, you know, the, part of their what they're going to have to do is convince these guys that that things aren't going to change, that we're going to continue to win football games, that they're going to be there for the, the entire time that these guys who have committed to play at Alabama are going to be here. Uh, as disappointed as we are, it doesn't mean that things are going to go down the tube. It just means that it's going to be a different guy running things, you know, so. You know, to mm -hmm. me, it's, I think that's a part of this. Yeah. Let's hope, let's hope that's the case. And, uh, everybody's, everybody still comes to Bama to play. So, uh, thanks a lot, Mick. I appreciate it. Hey, roll tide up there, man. And, uh, and thank you for calling. Roll in. tide. All right. Let's go back to the, thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks brother. Let's go back to the phone lines again. And, uh, as we, uh, talk about this, who's this and where are you calling from? This is Heath. Meat. What's up, brother? Otherwise known as Meat. Oh, man. Uh, crazy. I'm out here just getting some corn for my beer feeder, and my mom calls me, which, you know, I talk to my mom often, but I just not usually during the middle of the week. And then, of course, my wife, Melanie, calls me, and it's like, what the hell? And, uh, yeah, finally came the day we knew that was coming. I was hoping we'd get a few more years out of the goat. But, um, you know, let the guy enjoy, you know, enjoy his rest of his life. I mean, let him drive that Ferrari around and just, and have fun. He, he's given us more than we could have ever asked for. Yeah. You know, when Coach Bryant retired in, in 82, I was 10 years old. And I remember it. People were crying. Uh, my grandmother cried. Uh, she loved Coach Bryant. Um, and I, you know, the time we spent down there at WVUA, you know, we never thought we'd see another national championship after the 92 season. Dude, I know it, man. Yeah. In 07, when, you know, I was like, if coach can give us two or three, I'll be happy as a clam. Yeah. And, you know, he just hangs up a six spot. And <laughs> um, we're going to look back on this in, in, a, in, in a few years and, you know, as the decade and the years go by and the decades go by and go unbelievable because I can tell you what. My uncle lived through, he was in college and, you know, young man during the 70s run. He was in college in the 60s, too, and he remembers that Coach Bright run. And, and nobody ever thought it would happen again. Um, and then, you know, Nick Saban decided to uh, to go uh, show up on the capstone and the rest is history. I'm just grateful he came, man. And I don't know what the other caller said, but, you know, Bama is Bama. Bama was before, Bama was Bama before Coach Saban got there. And they'll be Bama after. I just now I'm interested. I've had about I don't even I didn't even look at my text on how many people are. Who's going to be? Who's it going to be? What do you say, Mister Gillespie? Yeah, What's it going to be. And who's, and who's taking the goat's place? Man, my my phone's blowing up too. I I I, I gave my list. I'll, I'll tell you again. I I had it as okay. uh, I had this is my my five uh, in, in this order uh, to, for me. I'd say okay. Dan Lanning five. D'Amico Ryan's four, Stark three, huh. Dabo two, huh. and Kirby one. And oh. I think you go and you spend as much money as you can 
to get Kirby to leave, just like we did with Nick Saban. You know, like when when Alabama paid Nick Saban, I don't remember what it was, but it was like you know four million or three million or something. Coaches didn't make yeah, the kind it of was money. A shit ton at the time. Yeah, right. And and now you look at it and you go, you know what? He's paid Nick Saban's paid the most. So you got ten to work with right now. You know, throw another five on there and and get him out of Athens. Give him a lifetime contract because he's the closest thing to Nick Saban. He is. And we, we have the well, money to be it. able to do that. I'd pay I more for a Coke at the game. game. I, look, <laughs> Meathead, I'd pay more for a Coke at the game to have Kirby on the sideline, wouldn't you? Hey, don't get me started about, about the concessions in Tuscaloosa. Okay, <laughs> you and I are on the same page with that. We could talk on that all day long. We've seen the glory years where the concessions were awesome. But I digress. The list is awesome. But here's the thing, and I love Kirby. He is hands down my favorite coach walking the sidelines today. And I love him for what he did for our alma mater. He ain't leaving Georgia, man. Yeah. It's not happening. Probably he played not. there. He's from there. He's born and bred. That's like asking Coach Bryant to leave Alabama. That's like, I just, it's not going to happen. Yeah. I, we can dream, and that's a great list. But, um, and, and I'm, Dabo, I'm just, I'm Dabo'd out, man. You know, the reason Coach Saban left, and this is all going to come out, we all know it. We, you know, we all know Coach Saban and his, and his actions. It's because the game has changed. He's adapted and adapted and adapted. And this is just a bridge too far with this NIL and the transfer poor combined. And, and you know, he's just, he's been there, done that. He doesn't have anything else to prove. That being said, uh, man, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm liking some Dan Lanning, um, and, and I love me some Sark. Uh, but, you know, people are asking about Kiffin. You know, I don't even know what his buyout is. I know he got a new contract, but you know, it's just it's going to be interesting. And, and you know that, that, that Greg Byrne is a top-tier athletic director. Yeah, He's got a list. He's had one. And he knew this day was coming. And um, it's just that now we just sit back and watch the, you know, grab the popcorn meme, you know, and see what happens. And, and you know, I remember when Coach Saban signed that contract, there was a, a very wealthy family up in Walker County called the Drummond family. And their mate patriarch at the time sat on the board of trustees, and he said it was the worst hire that was ever made at the University of Alabama. It was quoted in the Birmingham back when there was a Post Herald, uh, and he said it was too much money. Well, you know, I'm not going to call out. Well, everybody can figure out who Mr. Drummond is, but um, I'm just grateful to have had the run that we had and to witness it. And um, now it's uh, it's on to the next page and and, and more titles because you know they're coming. I'm just great. I can't wait for the 12 team playoff, but. You know, D'Amico Ryans is, is, you know, he was there when we were down there. He's a great guy, a hell of a coach. I just, I don't know, man. I don't know if you go from pro down to, you know, I don't know. It's just going to be interesting to see. Yeah. Um, so, brother, thanks for the uh, the sticker, man. And, uh, look, I, I don't know. And, and, and you know, your, his sentiments are kind of with yours. You know, maybe I'm, 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 I'm way off on Kirby, but Kirby's the guy – that I, I mean, see. You may be right. I, well, I, I don't know. I mean, I know he 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 probably has it pretty good there, but I'm just saying, you know, that he's the guy that that does it the Saban way. He does it the Alabama way. I mean, I watched Georgia turn into Alabama, running the football and you know dominating defenses, and he's he's you know obviously he's younger and uh, and, and all of that. And I and I know the NFL's after him as well. You know, and who knows? I mean, maybe he's happy. He's going to keep winning championships in in Athens. I mean, the guy that he really had a tough time beating is gone. And, uh, you know, so I'm sure it opens up for, you know, for Georgia, kind of like it did, you know, uh, when Alabama got Nick Saban and all of a sudden, you know, he's dominating. But I, I don't know. I mean, you never know until you ask. Um, and I, so you're, I, I hear you. I just – Go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, our money talks, man. And that, that's what we found out with Nick Saban. You know, t money talks and bull crap walks. My dad used to say that. And and I mean, the, there's the, this program, they make, you know, what, billion dollars with football. You know, and when you think about it, 15 million or whatever it would take to wrestle him away, if, if you know, it, it's there. I just, I mean, I love you. I love you and I hear you. But let me tell you something about uh, just, a, it's like, you know how much Jake Coker loves the University of Alabama. Yeah. Right? That's like asking him to go over and coach. You know what I mean? I just, if he had the opportunity, if he's already at his alma mater, I just, I just, the passion, man, and the Kirby is a Georgia dude. 
like yeah. through and through. I'm, I'm and, with I you. I mean, I, I get it. It's, it. They're paying him the money. They're giving him the checkbooks open for Kirby. He is a god over there. Mm-hmm. They don't have a statue of him if they already don't. I haven't been to Athens in 20 years. But I just – Good town. I, I think there's, there's – we could, we could find – somebody that's a better fit from an Alabama standpoint. Um, anyway, I'm just glad it's not back in the day. It had to be somebody associated with Coach Bryant, you know, right. in those days. Yeah. You know, uh, it, 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 things have evolved so much. Uh, I'm just grateful to have witnessed the, the run of, uh, of Coach Saban and uh, now on to the next chapter and um, roll tight, man. Roll tight, brother. Well, thanks for calling in and uh... – yeah, I mean, we'll we'll it, this is going to be definitely interesting to see where we go from here. But I, I'm just like you said, I'm glad that we have an athletic director that the guy went and found Nate Oates, and Nate Oates is the best basketball yeah, coach. Yeah, there's no, there's no one better. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I'm sure exactly. It's I'm, fans I'm ready too. to make a run next year. I don't. It, it's just I'm ready for transition to football season and actually. You know, ready for some baseball. I'm excited about baseball and you know women's softball and all these sports that you know we 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 covered when we were down there. And it's just um, we're going to be fine. Uh, we're we're in the best spot we've ever been. And I just wish he would have been able to have kind of a farewell tour. But as you know, as well as I do, that's not Coach Saban's style. No, uh, he's not an egomaniac like Coach K over at Duke um, <laughs> and some of these other people that that want to be propped up. Every, you know, get up fuck out of here with that crap you know right, it's just right. i'm um i'm glad he did it and i'm i'm looking forward to seeing what what greg Byrne has in store for us and regardless we're gonna we're gonna support him and and uh maybe we can get that concession stands turned around yeah right well if, if we got to pay a little bit more money for a, <laughs> a stadium dog and a coke to go out and get curvy i'm down for it but <laughs> i don't know maybe i'm wishing you, man. Keep- i just saw him in that game after I, I, that I, sec championship game and I'm, I, I'm just like, you know, I, I love the guy. I mean, I just do. Like, he just represents I do too. I can, such a great favorite. coach, such a great person, man. Humble and loss, humble and win. I mean, he, he's he's taken what, what Nick Saban all taught him and ball. been awesome. He's all ball all the time. Yep. If it ain't about ball, Kirby ain't about it. That's right. And look, that's Coach Saban. You know, again, I, I love it, but I think there's other guys, again, D'Amico Ryan. I just, you know, that would be a crazy, awesome hire, but, you know, I, I don't know D'Amico's background as much. You know, like Roman Harper. Roman Harper is a Bama by 50 every time. You know what I mean? If if Roman was up for it, he would leave anywhere to come back and coach at Bama. Right. I just don't – I don't know, man. I, I love that list, though, honestly. That's, the, that's a great list, Mitch. Uh, other than – I just I feel like you're wishful thinking on the Kirby thing, but hey, stranger things have happened. I mean, nowadays, who knows? You know, if you'd have told me ten years ago we'd have a twelve team playoff, I'd have laughed in your face. Yeah, right. And now the NCAA is imploding on itself. Hell, I'm I'm looking forward now to some NCAA football twenty four. Yeah. How, how awesome Bama's going to be. Yeah. But of course, the last time we had a game NCAA game on a PlayStation, it had freaking a Michigan player on it. I'm sure it'll have one again, but. <laughs> Well, great, great to hear from you, man. Roll Tide. Thanks, brother. Likewise, brother. Roll Tide. Have a good one. You too. Tell the family, hey. I will. All right, let's go back to the phone lines again. I'm going to get all you guys in, so just be patient as we uh, get to the calls. Who's this and where you come from? Yes, my my name is David, and I'm calling from Virginia. Calling from where? Calling from Virginia. Oh, Virginia. Okay, um, David. What are you thinking, man? Um, I'm a graduate of the University of Alabama, 1979, and we have to realize that we were very lucky to get Fabian in the beginning, because if Drew Brees doesn't pass his physical, if, if Drew Brees passed his physical, he would have had a quarterback with Miami, yep. and he would have never been available. Yeah, you're exactly right. So, so we should thank thank God that we had. Uh, Coach Saban for 17 years, and he gave us the best 17 years of Alabama football ever in the history of the school. Yeah. And I think he's not one just to walk away and leave things untidy. He's going to, he's had everything uh, planned out. I'm sure they have a coach already 
And I think they're going to announce it probably before the week is out hmm. because they have to act fast to keep all of these signees. Yeah. Because there's going to be a 30 day, 30 day opening for the portal. And, um, this is a top notch organization and we're, it's not going to slip. I'm sure he's going to stay on in an advisory role. He's just not going to go to the lake and retire. And his wife, Miss Terry, he, she loves the school. And um, this isn't the end of Nick Saban. He's not going to get on his horse and ride into the sunset. He's going to be with us for the rest of his life. And he uh, breathes and bleeds Alabama football. And uh, the truck stop guy, he said he was going to pull off to the side of the road and cry. Uh, he should cry tears of joy. Right. Because uh, Nick Saban's doing what he wants to do. He's seven, going to be 73 in the next football season. And, uh, you know, he has the life. He gave his life to Alabama for 17 years. And now he's moving on to enjoy his life. And um, we're going to have a we're going to have a great coach, and I don't see much of a drop off. And um, thank you, thank you for your time. Hey, thanks, David. And, roll um, Tide, man. Have a happy New Year. Have you a happy too. New Year. You too, brother. Roll thank, Tide. Roll, roll tide. tide. Roll Tide up in Virginia. All right, great call there. Let's go back to the phones. Uh, and guys, hang on. I'm going to get to you. I know there's a lot of calls here. Who's this, and where you calling from? Yeah, this is Stephen from Tampa, Florida. What's up, Stephen? Yeah, um, I know everybody's saying you don't want to be the coach that comes after Nick Saban. Uh, they said that when Bear Bryant, but I think everything's different now. You know, uh, you didn't have the five stars and all that. You didn't have all the information and everything you get from players. I actually think a good hire would be um, Lane Kiffin. Okay, you look what he's done for Ole Miss. He's done everything you can for Ole Miss. Ole Miss is not going to get anywhere else. But he was great here as an office coordinator, and he would make Milro a better quarterback. I don't disagree with that at all. He the way he works with quarterbacks is is legendary. So yeah, I mean, I, I, that he would definitely be good at um, you know running the offense. And I just look at all the offensive guys we had coming in this year. You know, that would be great. Yeah. Well, I mean, that and that that may I, I don't know. Look, I'm just telling you from, you know, the sources that I have, he kind of left us. Uh, <laughs> some people weren't real happy with him. You know, uh, I don't know if if he would get an opportunity to come. But I think that the coaching part of it would be something that he could definitely handle. I think he'd be great in that aspect of it. And, right. and, and you know, as 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 much of the stuff that I said that happened, you know, behind the scenes that that hurt his candidacy. The people have talked about what he's done at Ole Miss, how he's kind of turned things around there. Um, you know, so, I mean, you can't argue with, with what Lane Kiffin does on the field. I mean, the fact that Ole Miss uh, won what 11 games this year, he lost to, he lost to Alabama and Georgia and then won the rest of his games, you know, went to the peach bowl, won that. Um, I, I don't know that he's going to be, t I, I don't think that he's even going to be considered to be honest with you, but I, I'm not disagreeing that he couldn't come in and, and do the job. No doubt in my mind that he could. Roll Tide, man. Hey, thanks, Steven. Really appreciate it, man. Roll Tide to you and uh, have a great new year. All right, back to the phone lines again. And if you guys want to call in, uh, call in right now that some lines are actually open. Who's this and where are you calling from? Nick, it's Steven from Perdido. Hey, what's up, Steven? What's up, brother? Man, roll Tide. Roll Tide, dude. Uh, not, <laughs> was not expect. I almost <laughs> went, you're going to appreciate this. Uh, today at about 2 o'clock, I was thinking about going to Joe Patty's and loading up on, <laughs> that, I'm serious, loading up on some shrimp and some fish for my uh, my carb diet that I'm on right now, along with dry January. And for some reason, I got talked out of it. And this happens. Oh, I mean, like, I, it was happened. almost like I was supposed to be here for this. Yep. Destiny. Joe Patty's hard to beat, babe. Oh, I love Joe Patty's, man. They get a little bit of a, 
<laughs> a little shout out here. <laughs> you know, everything. They got every fish they, under the sun. Oh man. <laughs> you go in there, it's like uh it's it's really like a superstore of fish, of fresh fish. Everything, man. Every size what? shrimp you could ever think of, anything that swims, they've got it over there. What what are your thoughts on this? I'm I'm shell shocked. I kept hearing uh, this morning about him leaving early from uh, down south from Stewart or wherever he was. And I kept saying, well, it's just the first day back to school. They're getting, he's getting the team, you know, on schedule first day back. And, uh, I, I never imagined that we would be getting this news this afternoon. No, but I'm sure I wanted to cry. <laughs> yeah. The funny thing is Steven is that I was texting Chris Lowe yesterday and I said, right. uh, it, it just about something else, because uh, because we're friends, not just in football, but we're just friends. And I, I said, hey, is right. uh, is Nick Saban retiring or is Kirby going to the NFL? <laughs> and he, he didn't answer me about the Nick Saban. He said Kirby's going to win at least two more national championships. <laughs> and, then he, and then he breaks the story today. So. Chris, 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 uh, well, knows, Chris knows these guys personally. They tell them stuff, and you know, I hate it. I, I wish it was. I, I wish it wasn't true. I mean, I really do. The timing makes sense, though. This is where you would do it. Yeah, yeah. I, I you know, I kind of had a feeling earlier in the season, but uh, he he hit it well. You know, recruiting and doing the Nick Saban thing, staying on schedule. Um. But I'm looking to the future. I, you know, I would be excited if Lane Kiffin uh, got a look at him, you know? Yeah. Wouldn't you bring that offense back? I think they're all weapons. I think, uh, I think that'd be a good way to go. I don't know. You know, you think we look at Dan Lanning? I think, honestly, I mean, there's a lot of momentum for Dan Lanning. Just because, you know, that you know, being out in Oregon, you're a long way from a lot of the top talent. And not to say that there's not great players in California. And I'll tell you, man, when I when I was out in Hawaii, um, and I got around some of the Samoan guys and how good they are at football, and and you look at a lot of the teams out there, Washington and USC and BYU, you know, they'll go and get. And, and get some great Samoan talent to come. You know, even Alabama's had some guys, some Samoan guys come in. And I, and that's a great, like, hotbed of, of really good football players. Um, but when you look at where the best college football players are, they're in the South, man. I mean, really, like, you know, from Texas over, uh, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, you know, it's just a hotbed of talent. You can get players everywhere. But these states are loaded. You got the culture of winning football at Alabama. The fact that he coached under Nick Saban. This is a the, Alabama has once again become the best job in college football. And and when Saban took over, yeah, we we thought it was the best job in college football. But the coaches didn't think so. You know, and I mentioned it before. You're, you're dealing with an athletic department that wasn't on your side sometimes, people that had their own agendas. You had boosters that were really out of control. And Nick Saban came in and took care of all of that stuff, made it to where it was like it is now, you know, where basically the coach can coach. Football drives the engine, and, and it always will in, in, at Alabama. But um, you, you've got to have the right mentality to come in and, and kind of c- command that. I mean, you still want the boosters involved. You just don't want them making decisions, right? You want the athletic de- department to be behind you. But um, but they also have to understand that, you know what, we love gymnastics, and, and it's great that you got people in and you're selling out and all that, but it's not football, you know, and, and it's the same thing with any of those uh, the sports. But all you know over there now, like all the coaches understand that, you know, Nick Saban walks in, it's a big deal. Football's a big deal. Everybody else kind of just falls in line after that. And I feel like Nick Saban brought that culture, not just the culture of winning on the field, but the culture of winning around the entire uh, program back. And I, and I think that's important too. Absolutely. Nate Oates takes notes from them. Um, they all learned a lot from them. But, um, you know, you know we're, Steven, we were blessed he, to see it, man. Oh, yeah, dude. He was – Wendell Hudson was the women's basketball coach. He's the one of the greatest basketball players of all time. And I remember Wendell <clears> telling me about recruiting 
and and trying to get talent on his basketball team. And his one of his go tos was, "Hey, let's go over to Nick Saban's office." <laughs> He'd bring the recruits <laughs> over, and, and, and yep. Coach Saban Walker would stop what he was doing and take time and meet their families and meet them and take pictures and all of that kind of stuff, man. You know, he was bought into yeah. the entire program, not just football, you know, and I think that's something that's right. going to be sorely missed as well. But that also goes to show you kind of what he means to to Alabama. And, and um, you know, that's going to be something that we're going to we're going to sorely miss. But the, the net that you, you don't live forever and, and, and it's hard to outrace father time. And Chris Lowe told us something on the tailgate show that I'll reiterate here, too. We talked about Nick Saban retiring, and he said the one thing that Nick Saban always said was that he didn't want to retire at a point in his life where he couldn't go out and fulfill some of the things that he enjoy. wanted to do after football. Yeah, enjoy life. He, and he traveled. Right. Remember, he went to Italy, and everybody was yelling roll tide at him. He's given up so much of those experiences because he's been so dedicated to being the coach at Alabama and, and really wherever he's been, not just Alabama, but – um, and so in that aspect, you wish him the very best. I mean, and, and, and you understand that. Absolutely. We, the, 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 the thing that we can do is just keep thanking him. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, I don't think, like the last caller said, I don't think uh, Nick Saban would have anything to do with the, with the football day-to-day stuff. I don't, I don't think he would like it. You know, I think they're going to hire somebody. He may help with the hiring process. Um, I would imagine that, you know, everybody, all these coaches now are, are, have their Nick Saban mannerisms, their process speak, um, the way they, they take it to their program. You know, everybody's learned from Nick Saban over the years. People like Kirby, their little protégés, Dan Lanning's even got it in them. But uh, I, I just don't see Saban having uh, any strings attached to it. I, I, do you think he would still stick around and try to, uh, play a role with the next coach? I don't know. I mean, I think that he I, – honestly, I think he'll help if we ask him to. Uh, you know, I – Yeah, I, I don't I, – I bet you that, he, you know, he's pretty persuasive, you know. So, I mean, I'm yeah. guessing that that would be something that he would be okay doing. I mean, I, why not? I mean, it's hard to say. Well, I just didn't know you – you know, he's such a process-oriented guy, and, I, and somebody trying to – you know, feel like they're being uh, micromanaged or, you know, they're not, not allowed to do their own thing. Um, I hope that doesn't affect the coach, you know, if they're worried about that being the case. But uh, I, I just I, – I personally, I couldn't imagine Saban having much to do with other than maybe hiring and helping our AD and giving his two cents about, um, you know, their their pedigree and – what he knows about the coach personally or what he's heard about through the, through the ranks or not. But I, I, I couldn't see him personally, you know, doing anything more than that once he's hired. Yeah. But you know, the next coach, it's gotta be a highly sought after job because uh, you know, we're loaded. Um, whoever comes in is going to have weapons all over the field. You know, uh, they got Jalen hurts. You know, if he gets a few things wrapped up this spring, you know, reading the defense is getting the ball out a little bit quicker. He's going to be a top Heisman candidate, as you know. So I would think that somebody would be biting at the bit to get in here and oh, get this thing back on track, get That's, us another rain. Hey, you, you know what? You just nailed something. You're exactly right. They're gonna, there's coaches yeah. out there that know that they can step in. I think about Miami when they had their dynasty going, yeah. and they had like two or three different guys that came in and ran that program and did a damn good job yeah. of it, you know? Um, yeah. th- you gotta have somebody that recruits. That's obviously a big part of it. Um, and I think that, yeah. that they'll do that. I mean, th- these guys have learned from, yeah. from Nick Saban, but I don't know. I mean, I, I don't, I've never seen anyone so focused for so long than Nick Saban was as head coach at Alabama. And I, I don't know how it's you amazing. replace it. It's like he was programmed like a robot or something, you know, he was so laser focused on being successful. But, but, you know, he changed college football. You know, we had – even Mike DeBose won 10 games at Alabama. Yeah. Every coach we've had won 10 games at Alabama, right? Yeah. Um, so they would really have to really mess this up. But uh, but like I said earlier, Nick Saban in his 17 years, once he came back from Miami, he really laid down the foundation and the groundwork how to do it. Right. And, these, and, and football's 
has changed so much over the 17 years because of him, you know, strictly because of him. And, uh, man, I hate to see him go, Mick. <laughs> it's, a, it's a sad day, but I'm happy for him. And, uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to the future, brother. Yeah. And, uh, you bringing us all the news and tidbits, man. I look forward to this, uh, this year with you. Hey, well, thanks, Stephen, man. Roll Tide to you, and uh, we'll talk Roll again tide. soon. And uh, when we'll be Talks on, when they better. figure it out, we'll jump on immediately and do the same thing we're when, doing right when now. When you come over to Pensacola, uh, I'll take you to uh, Joe Patty's restaurant that I got open. Oh, now. yeah, I know Joe Patty's restaurant. Let's go over there and grab something to eat. Let's do it. All right, brother. Great talking, right. Stephen. See you now. Yeah. Roll Tide. Thanks. Talk soon, bro. All right, let's go back to the phone lines again and, uh, and and try to get as many of you guys on. Who's this and where are you calling from? Hey, this is CP calling out of Alabama, Hertzburg, Alabama. What's up, CP? Hey, man, I was just calling and just want to say, Nick Saban, I appreciate you being the coach at Alabama. And who is a lot of changes going to happen? Mm-hmm. And I think, um, for one, uh, really tell you the truth of my, you know, experience watching Nick Saban, you know, I grew up watching Nick Saban um, as being a coach. And um, one thing about Nick Saban that I paid attention of, especially on the Alabama defense and offense, whatever Nick Saban says do, they did it. So I think we really had a pretty good season this year, but it's not going to be the same. Yeah, well, that's the that's the tough part about about anything. I mean, it, you know, life life changes. You know, I mean, and I'm I'm yeah. with you, and that's what sucks. I mean. It's not going to be the same. You know, I, Jake Coker and I no. do um, a podcast together called Elephant in the Room, and he was talking about yesterday we, we did a show, and he said, you go to Alabama and they treat you like you're still playing. They, he said, it's just yeah. it's like family. I mean, you go in and you're welcome and they hang out with you and, you, you know, you can do whatever. I mean, there's a – Saban brought back the pride – of Alabama football, something that really started to slip. And, 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 you know, and it really is not just the winning. And we talked about that in the championships, but yeah. the entire mm-hmm. process, the process was always about just doing things the right way. And that's what Nick Saban oh, yeah. was able to oh, yeah. do, you know, like to teach these guys how to go out. Think about all the millionaires that <laughs> have walked through those doors. Yeah. You know, and yeah, and and it's not just yeah. like I said with Ryan. You know, like Ryan comes in, and and he's out of the NFL, and he's on to the next part of his life. You know, he's running a business. Yeah. He's doing this. Mike Johnson's on radio in Atlanta. You know, and he's doing his thing. And you know, all of these guys that I've become friends with that have went through the process. You know, they tell you they're going to do something, and they do it. You know, and I'm not, and yeah. maybe some of them were like that before they got there, but this guy's like a father figure to those players. Oh, yeah, because cause one thing I know about Nick Saban, and a lot of a lot of coaches, for example, Texas, um, um, Georgia, a lot of coaches came from up on Nick Saban, and <laughs> I know they, I know, like when they play each other, you know, they be like, Man, I hate I hate I have to play, you know, this team, you know, this coach because this coach right here, he really taught me everything about the game, especially of football. And um right. I tell uh, I was telling somebody the other day, I was saying, uh when Nick Saban started at Alabama, he started a dynasty. Yeah. And uh and for him to go and recruit the players like he recruited, you know, a lot of schools need to do stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, they need that, you know, that guidance from like, okay, for example, okay, um, this is a boy I went to school with. He went to Central High. Well, I played at Russell County High, but um, he was one of um, Nick Saban's players. And um, 
the way Nick Saban came and, you know, came and talked with the family and stuff like that and talked with the players and stuff like that, I think that what all coaches really need to do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But um, I want to. I'm all I want to say is roll tide, and we just got to keep it going. Hey, thank you, CP. Roll tide to you, man. And uh, we'll, we'll, when when this thing breaks, who the next coach is, we'll be right back here, like we always do. We'll be putting content out. And um, man, thank you for calling in. And please call back. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Let's get another call. And I appreciate all you guys in the comments section. And, uh, man, appreciate the super chat from you, Soul Brother, and all you guys that are hanging out. Who's this and where are you calling from? Yes, yeah, this is Cody Lloyd Daniel. I'm from Ethelsville, Alabama. It's a little small place on the way on, on highway, too, in between Starkville and Tuscaloosa. Okay, yeah. Okay. I'm actually currently driving right now, so I apologize. No, go ahead, man. We can hear you. There's a few, there's a few, uh, a few points I want to lay I, I kind of want to lay out. It's, it's more of a, a legacy aspect to it with, with Coach Saban. To me, he brought not only the University of Alabama, but he brought the state to a level of prestige, a level of recognition, a level of, uh, you know, I sort of no longer have to deal with some of the stereotypes that yeah. are, you know, passed around and, and gossip and stuff. And so that's what, that's what to me, I, that's, what, that's what I miss. That's what I'm going to miss the most, honestly. And, and Hey, you know, you know, I, I like like most of the people who call in today, or you know, or will. I was I, I wasn't born when Bear Bryant was alive and coached and retired. You know all that, so I had to hear about it from my grandpa, and, that, and you know that that creates a bond right there. So it's like, I don't know, man. It's it's a weird comparison it is to make. It feels like feel like to me like when Coach David, even though I know he's not passed away, it kind of feels like feels like when the Queen passed away last year. It's a it's a it's a, it's a changing of the guard. It's, a, it's an era that is gone. Something an unknown that we don't know what the come with before us, you know. And so it's just, it's just, um, it's sad, it is. But I mean, but you know, like, uh, I can't remember who the other gentleman was that called earlier, but you know, I'm happy for him. I, he, he has earned every last bit of this. So, you know, it's just, it's a mixed emotion, mixed emotions completely. Yes, sir. Yeah. I'm and with you, man. I, I, I to go from, yeah. And as to go from here, I have concerns. I, I really am because, as you mentioned, as uh, yeah, as you were talking to Chad earlier, the game has changed, and it is is changed. I think I mean, most of us probably agree to, to some common ground that it has not changed for the, for the better. Obviously, player, players should be given some kind of compensation and stuff. It's it's, it's the point where it is, like you said, or uh, like I believe Chad said, it's my pro. It's just I, I don't know what to make of it, and I don't know what I don't know what because. If you told me seven years ago, I like most people, I would have said, "Hey, I would love to have like Dabo as the, as the heir, as the replacer, the I mean, successor." And now, I feel like there's, I feel like besides Kirby, there is no coach really that to that to that level that can sustain sustain a program. And and I believe you also mentioned earlier as well with uh with like with with like uh regards to Jermaine Burton and the taunting on the sideline or the taunting after the, the touchdowns and just the, the constant you know, all the penalties that we occurred and they seem to be I had no repercussions for I, I I really do feel like we have to find I hate to use the term Michigan man because I obviously consider the circumstances now but yeah I feel like you do have to have somebody who has that that grit who has that determination who has that class about to become the next coach you know mm -hmm. yeah and I just I, I just I just you know, and I, um I mean your thoughts obviously I know you said throw the throw the bank to Kirby well I mean I I just yeah, said that yeah, I mean, like I started to make this list um, a week ago. I was going to do a show, and I said it was thinking mm -hmm. like if if he left, like who would it be? And I and I was, you know, I had the the usual suspects, you know, Dan Lanning and and Sark, and right. you know, and uh, I I yes, I just know from my sources, uh, I just don't think Lane Kiffin's even going to get a call or an interview. But I know he could do the job. I just right. think that there's that you know they if he would have been if he would have conducted himself the way that he is now, I mean, he'd probably be the guy, you know, but, but, but I mean, who knows? Right. I mean, it's, you know what, at the, at the end of the day, I mean, I, I don't make the decisions, you know, maybe it is him. I, I don't know, but I didn't have him on my list. And I started thinking, and I, after Alabama beat Georgia in that championship game, the class that Kirby smart showed before the game and after the game, mm -hmm. watching that football team play, 
um, and 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 what he brings to the table. I just said it, it really reminded me of Nick Saban, and I I just knew that like that would be the number one guy to me. Now you, you know a lot of you guys know, and I and I, I'm not disagreeing. That's a long shot. But when, you know, when we got Nick Saban, it was a long shot there. Now, Kirby's not unhappy. He's not, right. You know, he's, he's not in a situation, I don't think, where he's wanting to leave or anything like that. But at the same time, you know, maybe you just you just throw an offer up there that's so crazy that he's got to do it. And when we hired Nick Saban, the money that he got in college was crazy. Well, now you look back and you're like, man, right. it was worth every penny. And you bring up something, too. I lived in Tuscaloosa when we hired Nick Saban. And there was a, a housing situation across the country when I was about to sell my house. You remember that, the housing bubble and all that stuff. Our property value right. stayed high in Tuscaloosa. And it was because of Nick Saban. I mean, really, it, it really was because so many people um, have, you know, <clears throat> so many people uh, have come to the university because of the football program uh, and, and, because of Nick Saban, we never really went into, you know, that where it was happening in other parts of the country. I mean, we stayed pretty steady and it was because we were winning so many football games. You know, I, I look at the you know, like give University of Tennessee as an example. They were losing so many games and uh, businesses were were leaving their strip, you know, their version of the strip, which is uh, Cumberland Avenue. Right. And, and it was because they they didn't have that success. There wasn't that excitement. Um you know, about the, um, you know, ab about the program. So, um, look, I don't know that and, and his soul brothers, like that I'm not joking about the, about Kirby and in, in a way where I'm saying uh -huh. that it's going to happen. I'm just saying, if you were trying to get the number one guy, it would probably start with him. And then if, and if he says no, then I guess you, you know, which he probably will, but if he does, then, then you look at the Dan Lannings and, um, and those other guys and, you know, and we'll see. Yeah, and I wholeheartedly agree that you're 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 spot on with the with the Kirby thing. I, I the, the announcement, you know, he he is the he's typical. I, I hate to use I hate to use the word class so much, but he he does he, he exemplifies class. He, right. he is what you would you would expect. And so it's, it, it's, I just don't see in the field. And maybe maybe it's just because I'm I, my my biased mind can't see past the other candidates to see the good marriage and what they what they. You know, I I like a Dan Lang, but I, but I just feel. What does he prove? I mean, his record, yes, it's great. Against a Pac-12 at the early beginning of the year, looked fantastic. I believe what four of the four of the top ten, but then as the as the as the as it went along, it just kind of kind of just fizzled out. And you saw in the national championship game, even though in spite of Michael Penix's receivers completely failing him, I just it, it, it seemed like there. I don't know. I just I want I want that fire. I want. That integrity. I I want something to retain the respect that we that not me. I, I don't watch that we, but it was but the, the university that the football program has earned. You know, I I I'm I'm greedy. I ain't gonna lie to you. I won't. I mean, obviously there will never be another another Saban dynasty or whatever we're gonna call, or coin the term in, in years to come. But I want success. I want I want that to stay high. I want. I, I mean, I guess I said again. I want that respect to stay high. Yeah. That's what I. That's, be all to end all right there. Yeah. You know, I, I won't. Well, maybe, yeah. and, and maybe, and maybe Dan Lanning is like a Nick Saban type. May, they know, look, it, I mean, he, he's coached for Kirby, coached for Alabama. Those coaches know who right. the next guy is, and maybe he's the next guy. You know, maybe he's, he's one of them, and they know it, and they know that he's going to be the guy that is going to be able to step in and kind of do this exact same thing because he's, he is a lot more of a realistic option and um yeah you know and it, and i i don't know man we would have all these coaches searches and i know it's different now but do you remember like um in our mind it was all like stallings left and we had all these names and then but they gave the job to dubose right and then and then he got fired right. and we had exactly. all these names that we wanted and then no one wanted the job I mean, we we had to take what was it, Dennis Franchoni, mm -hmm. and it was because we couldn't get anybody better. Oh yeah, you know, and then yeah, and then he all, leaves, and we're like, oh, we got all these big expectations, and then we go and get, you know, uh, we got Mike Price, and then obviously that he made such a fool of himself, we had to go find 
anybody to take the job. I thought that the guy should have been um, should have been Croom. Uh, they they hired um, yeah. they hired Shula. Yeah. Now, uh, you know, uh, be honest with you. Um, I played uh, baseball with uh, his his nephew. I knew what kind of guy he was, and I just really wanted to see Kroon be the coach. But after that, it was like when Sh- Shula left. Then remember, um, they hired Rich Rodriguez, or they thought they did. And I then, know. And then and he, his, and then he, out. yeah, and then he turns yeah. it down because of his wife. And then, and, and it was one of those times where where Mal Moore pulled off and just the most unbelievable hire. And uh, and obviously you drive through Tuscaloosa, you go through campus now, and it looks like an entirely different yeah. place. And 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 a big part of that, well, I mean, I give Saban a lot of credit, man. I mean, I, I give Saban credit for a lot mm-hmm. of this success that we've had, and he's made so many careers because people have come and yeah, and yeah. they have learned from the master, you know. And um and so maybe Dan Lanning's that guy. I, I you know what I, I I don't know. I mean I I think that whoever takes this job is going to have a lot of work to do as far as keeping people excited about what's going on. And, um, and I think that they're, that the minute that they get in, they're going to have to be ready to fight because we're going to have to fight to keep our recruits. We're going to have to fight to keep our roster. That, I know. I, I'm, I'm, the, I'm a big, big uh, Julian, Saiyan, Julian Super Saiyan supporter right there. And I, and I just, if, he, if, he, if you know, I, I I don't want to go into much detail about the about the, about the quarterback situation this, this year, but as I just uh, I've had I have a different opinion on that, which by my, my opinion doesn't mean anything. But I just I, I want to retain the recruits. Uh, as I think one of the one of the gentlemen from uh, New Jersey that called you earlier, what got he, he you know they, that was his first question was the recruiting. What what you know? What, and, and I hope you know if it, 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 something something to me these past few days, it seemed like the players declaring, the players leaving. Which you know is usual fare, obviously in this day and age. But it just it felt something. Something felt more. Now I don't know. I'm not insinuating that they had a, a knowledge that this was this is now. You know, in the age of social media, I don't think that would ever happen. The player would probably let it slip by accident. But it just something seemed different about the about the, the mass expert that well, not mass, but the, the, ex, the people that were leaving. It just I don't know. It just something something struck me differently. So I don't know. That's what I'm afraid of. I'm afraid of losing. You know, who, who we got. Right. Yeah, I'm, it's just it's it's it, no, I'm with you, man. I I mean, it's just like you you sit here and you talk about this, and right now is the biggest part of the uncertainty of this whole situation, right? Once Alabama's got right. to get this higher, right? They need to do it. They need to do it fast, and that next coach has got to come in and 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 be ready to convince everyone that things aren't going to change, and I think that the right person's going to uh-huh. do that. I hope so. I, they, they they know more than I will ever know, and I'm just I'm just a I'm just a, a boy from for the a boy from uh, from West Alabama that knows absolutely nothing. So I trust the professionals on that. Just I just enjoy watching the sport and I love the university. So that's about it. But I won't I won't hold you up. I, I love the show. Appreciate it, man. And I, I roll tide to y'all. I hope I hope this all goes well. And hope you know just hope hope against hope. Yeah, roll tide, man. Thank you for calling in and uh, do it again soon. Um, guys, we've been on for you know, almost two hours and we'll keep popping on as, as things break to kind of just talk about them and, and get into what it all means to the the program and, and to uh, the, the future of Alabama. Uh, you know, the, the, this next hire is going to be a, a really important hire, but you, you're not taking over a program that is uh, that's, that's the cupboards bare. I mean, you got, you got money, you got the infrastructure, you got a great athletic director and um, you know, and at the end of the day, you know, something is uh, you know, they, they hire the right person. And I think they will, because I, I, I'm guessing that there's a coach out there like a Dan Lanning or whoever that is going to be able to come in and, and want the challenge of, of maybe continuing the success that, that this program has had, you know, and I'm sure that Nick Saban, is going to have his fingerprints on whatever, you know, the the next coach, whatever decision that Alabama makes. I'm sure they're going to ask him to be a part of it. Uh, I'm definitely interested to to hear what he says in his press conference, and uh, you know, in kind of his thoughts on this. But 17 years of amazing, 17 years of just 
continued success. Uh, I mean, it, it it's just really remarkable when you look back and you see where things are right now because of Nicholas Lou Saban being the head coach at Alabama. And, you know, we talked about it before. This is uh, this day. We, we knew that this day was eventually going to come, but he's leaving the place a lot better than when he got there. And um, I'm just sure that they're not going to make a mistake with this next hire, but we'll find out. Guys, uh, if you're hanging out with us for the first time, let me ask you to please like and subscribe. Follow us uh, here on the Bama Tailgate YouTube channel. Um, also, our show brought to you by New Life Art, promo code Bama Tailgate. It, 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 as you pimp out your man cave with some of the great moments in Alabama sports history, you get 15% off your uh, regularly priced order by using that, that code Bama Tailgate. So, uh, you know, check it out. And, uh, and again, thank you guys all for calling in, for, for getting in the comment section, for the super chats and everything else. Um, roll Tide, everybody. We're lucky that we've been through this. And, um, I mean, 17 years of just absolute amazingness. And I'm, I'm just looking forward to seeing maybe if we can get the next guy to take the baton. And, and who knows? You know, maybe there's, we're going to find somebody else that's going to be able to uh, maybe not be exactly – like Nick Saban, but somebody that can find the same success that, um, you know, that we've, we've grown accustomed to at Alabama. And now it's a 12 team playoff. So you don't have to win every single game to be a national champion anymore. I want to thank Chad Anderson for calling in. And of course, Brett Elmore, big Elmo for, for being part of, uh, of everything that we do here on the channel. I'm Mick Gillespie. Thanks again, guys. And uh, again, roll tide, uh, not the best day in Alabama history, because we're losing Nick Saban, but instead of looking at it in a way where you're saying, hey, we lost the greatest coach of all time, just think about the fact that we had the greatest coach of all time for 17 years, six national championships, all the bowl wins, all the 10-win seasons, and, and everything else that went along with uh, this program because of Nick Saban. We'll talk to you guys again soon. Thank you.